Okay, I'm going to talk some more about linear transformations. So remember last time we talked about the following uh, setting. You have a linear transformation from Rn to Rm. This is a linear transformation. And it's given by a matrix, um, which is an M by N matrix. Um, A11 up to A1N, AM1 up to AMN. This is an M by N matrix, and it just um, satisfies F of X1 through Xn is the matrix A applied to X1 through the column vector X1 through Xn. And let me just um, illustrate this with the case uh, n is equal to m is equal to 2. So this A is a 2 by 2 matrix, say A, B, C, D. And notice that, um, that A, B, C, D applied to 1, 0 is A, uh, C. And... Um, Similarly, um, if you apply it to uh, 0, 1, you get BD. And we can think of this in terms of, um, in terms of the bases. Uh, V1 is the vector 1, 0, and V2 is the vector 0, 1, as follows. Um, this equation right here, um, says that uh, f of uh, v1 is a v1 plus uh, c v2. And um, this one here, I should put the matrix a in here, uh, this one here says that f of v2 is B uh, V1 plus C V2. So one way to think of this matrix A is the first row is the coefficients of F of V1. What here goes here is A uh, C, which is F of V1. And what goes here is uh, B D. Um, and this here is um, f of v2. So the main thing I want to do now is um, just say the few extra words that are necessary to say this, the same thing about an arbitrary vector space. So suppose we have uh, two vector spaces v and w. Um, I want to know how to talk about the linear transformations from V to W. And if V was our N and W was our N, we would know how to do that. And, well, it's practically the same thing, except that you have to choose a basis. So um, that is an important uh, new ingredient here. Uh, Um, you have to choose a basis um, v1 through vn of v, and um, similarly a basis uh, w1 through wm of w. And then once you've done that, um, Notice that um, what is f of v i? Well, let's just say f of v1. f of v1 is some linear combination, a1, w1, plus dot, 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 a, m, w, m. And uh, f of v2 
is some B1, W1, plus, and so on. And so just put, put these uh, numbers here, um, the A's and the B's, and so on, into a matrix. And that, that's going to give you the matrix of linear transformation. What you do is you take A to be um, the matrix where you put um, A1, W1, uh, excuse me, A1, A2, down to A, M, and then B1, B2, down to BM. And so this is the uh, coordinates um, of f of v1 in the in the given basis of w and then similarly this is f of v2 and so on and so in the in the ith place uh you put the coordinates um I'll just write c1 down to c m the coordinates of f of v i with respect to the basis uh, w1 through w m. So again, this is an m by n matrix, and um, it So let me uh, state this formally. Um, suppose we have two vector spaces, V and W, and we have a basis uh, V1 through Vn of V, and W1 through Wm of W, then uh, the matrix um, of a linear transformation f mapping v to w um, is it's the matrix a11 through a1 uh, and a m1 through a m n it's the m by n matrix where here's the key point aij is the coefficient oops coefficient of wj in wj in f of vi okay so this is the punchline here so notice that you have um, n choices of j, and you have m choices of i here. And so that gives you a total of m times n entries, which is, of course, what you have in an m by n matrix. And um, another way of saying more or less the same thing is uh, that um, you can write f of uh, summation x i uh, v i here i runs from 1 to n this here um, is an arbitrary uh, vector v in v with its coefficients x i and uh, the statement is that this is equal to summation of uh, a i uh, j w j and now the sum is over j running from one to m so um,
This is just a sort of formal basis way of, of saying exactly what I'd said before in the case of Rn and Rm. So it's um, clear from what I just said that um, given V and W and a linear transformation, you get a matrix A. Of course, A depends on the bases of V and W. And um, it's kind of important how it does. I'll state just a, a special case of it, and I'm just going to give kind of a crude statement at the moment. I'll talk more about it in class. Um, so for example, um, suppose uh, V is equal to W. This is an important special case. So um, it's, if it's n-dimensional, we're talking about n by n matrices. And um, suppose that um, I'm interested in uh, the matrix of a linear transformation f from v to v. And um, well, I'm going to use the same basis for both copies of v, of course. So I just have to choose a basis v1 through vn. And once I've done that, I get a matrix A for this linear transformation. Um, but what if I'd chosen a different matrix, B prime, which is V1 prime through Vn prime? That's going to give me some new matrix A prime. And what's the difference? And the theorem um, is that A prime is equal to B A B inverse um, for some some matrix, some invertible matrix B. And this is a very tricky statement. Um, it's trickier than it looks. And the reason it's tricky is it has two sides, and on this side, this is the matrix um, of F with respect to the basis B prime. And uh, this here, this A here, is the matrix of F with respect to the original matrix B. And so you're you're kind of mixing and matching here a little bit. You're you have two different bases going on, A and A prime, and B is sort of merging the two. B B is B, the, this matrix B has to do with the um, relationship between these two bases, uh, B and B prime. And I'll just say that in um, B re relates B and B prime. Um, but for the moment, let's not worry about that. All, the main thing I wanted to say is that changing basis amounts to conjugating. This operation here is called conjugating um, A by uh, an invertible matrix B. And this is uh, something which comes up all the time.